welcome to the Gooder Podcast. I'm your host, Diana Frike. As partner and CMO of Retail Voodoo, an award-winning branding agency, I have worked and met with some of the most amazing women in the naturals industry, food, beverage, wellness, fitness even. As such, I have decided to create the Gooder Podcast to interview these great people and subject matter experts and have them share their insights and expertise with um, all of us and help us make the world become gooder. So very fun guest for us today, or for me today, somebody I worked with in the past, Sherelle Klaus of Dry Soda Company. Um, Sherelle is the visionary and founder, and of course, CEO of Dry Soda. She founded in 2005, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep, 2005. Yep. Um, after recognizing an absence of refreshing clean, non-alcoholic options, beverages in the market, she just became determined to create a first line, the first line of botanical bubbly that was worth plan, you know, pairing with a meal. Sherelle brings over two decades of entrepreneurial and financial and technology industry experience to her role as CEO. And with the guidance of some of the Pacific Northwest best chefs, that was my favorite part, and a savvy (laughs) corporate team, she pioneered this new category of beverages fearlessly driving her brand in a male-dominated industry. Prior to founding Dry, uh, Sherelle worked as a consultant for Infrastructure Management Group at Price Waterhouse and Price Waterhouse. She also serves, do you serve or are you served as president for the Forum of Women Entrepreneurs? I did serve, this was years ago, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, okay. This is where she drove strategic development of programs, events, and fundraising for the organization's 250 plus Seattle members. I also, just as an aside from all of this greatness of Sherelle, <laughs> I got to work with her here at Retail Voodoo personally um, back when her brand Dry was going through a pretty significant change. And we've just been lucky enough to participate in the journey at that time and just remain in contact. It's been fun. So Sherelle, hello. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. I'm yeah. so excited to be here. It's fun you, to get to talk to you again. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a while. You, um, you just made a personal move. You live just outside of Seattle now on the water. Is that right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I moved down to Beery and there's this incredible, like on the sound here. Um, and it's, it's the perfect place to be during COVID. That's for sure. And even <laughs> during all the smoke of these fires, cause we don't have, well, there's some out here, but it's been pretty clear. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. Goodness. Yeah. So yes, doing lots of stand up paddle boarding and hanging out. So it's, it's like being on vacation. Oh, every day. <laughs> Every day, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad thing. That's not a yeah, bad no. thing. I know. No, I feel pretty blessed. Um, so I want to just start out, you know, you, of course, have been pretty visible in the industry. But for those people that don't know Dry and, and kind of its genesis, maybe give us a high level overview. What is Dry and why did you create it? Sure. So um, like we had mentioned, I started the company 15 years ago. So 15 years ago, I had four kids under the age of seven. Um, And for the kind of the 10 year period behind that, basically, I guess it was nine years, um, 10 altogether, uh, you know, between the pregnancies and nursings and just all the other sort of mother responsibilities I had, I didn't drink. And I felt very left out because I'm a total foodie. I'm an extrovert. I love going out to dinner parties and to restaurants and events. But when you're not drinking alcohol, there's very little options for you. There's mm-hmm. extremely limited options. At times it's just water or mm-hmm. it's a water or a Coke. Mm-hmm. And if you're at a really fine dining establishment, um, you would like something to pair with your food yeah. <laughs> or exactly. to feel part of the ritual, right? Like somebody just plunks down a, you know, a glass with a bunch of ice in it and a soda. It's not the same as opening a nice bottle and pouring it into some beautiful barware. Mm-hmm. And I thought, this is crazy. I feel so excluded. Um, I feel almost like a second class citizen to restaurants. And I'm like, there's plenty of people who don't, aren't drinking for various reasons and would like an elevated option. So I thought to myself, I absolutely want to create something, A, that can pair with food. So it had to be these beautiful culinary yes. flavors. And then as you guys know, well, the packaging was really important to me. This package needed to be able yes. to sit on a white tablecloth restaurant yes. um, and, and just be part of that ritual. And mm-hmm. so I really thought it was possible to bring a drink to market, change the way people think about drinking, change the way um, the alcohol always has to be at the center of every celebration. Like it doesn't have to be, right? You can have mm-hmm. these 
now you probably don't want to coke in the center of every celebration but you might yeah. want some more elevated options sure. and i just i wanted to change the way people thought about drinking not that i'm anti-alcohol just that when you're not drinking I, there, there should be options so it was really mm -hmm. about inclusion and connections and and really options and so that's why i started it and i started it in my kitchen creating these really great flavors mm -hmm. so that the first four flavors were lavender lemongrass rhubarb and kumquat so these very fun culinary flavors you could pair with different mm -hmm. foods so yeah <laughs> that's how i got started with dry it's um and you know i i i how when you first were coming out with this and you you know mm -hmm. i mentioned in your bio you were talking a little bit about or we i mentioned kind of csds and beverage is very male dominated mm -hmm. were, were you getting some eye raises or were you getting people that were like hey she's on to something like what what was what was well, kind of the initial feedback before I launched it, everyone was like, do not go into beverage. Are you kidding me? That is like the worst business. It's just competitive. You'll get eaten alive. Even my own husband at the time was like, don't do this. This does not seem like a good <laughs> idea. Um, and it's, but it was like, for me, there was such a clear vision. And mm -hmm. then what's really funny is once I started it, I cannot tell you the number of times people have said to me, Oh, why didn't I think of that? Of course, duh, that's such a, you know, that's a billion dollar idea. Why didn't I think of it? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. it's exactly that. It's not that complicated. It is like, of course, people want options and they want an elevated experience. So yeah, it's, it was really funny how much pushback I got at the beginning. But then once I did it, I just, I mean, so many people, strangers, everyone's like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But yeah. what I think, what's interesting is you were getting pushback about entering the industry, but not on the idea. Am I catching exactly. that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. The industry, everyone was super worried about the industry, male dominated distributors situation route to markets are really difficult. Coke is yeah. extremely, they're, they're, you know, they're not very tolerant of this kind of innovation. Retailers will be difficult. And all of those things turned out to be very, very true. <laughs> but it's when you have a vision, you, mm -hmm. and you, and, and I did, I had a vision of where this thing could go that you mm -hmm. just, you just, Keep looking keep forward. Going. There's keep going. there's a lot of crying in between there when you, all of those <laughs> things come true, but you guys just keep moving forward. So, <laughs> oh man, I love that. I love that you that you um not only that you said it, but that you owned it, or maybe the other way oh, around. Oh yeah. Oh, one thousand <laughs> percent. Yeah. Man, so the category has the category. I mean, sodas and beverages in general has just changed so much since 2005 mm -hmm. and it, since you and uh, since we yeah. were working together you know when we were working <laughs> together long ago. i mean sparkling we we took um we were working with you and it's like it's let's move this into the sparkling beverage category mm -hmm. um and uh, and because sparkling beverages or sparkling water was not a thing I and mean, lacroix mm -hmm. was still out there were there for some you know this stuff was out there but as a category it was kind of a mm -hmm. it wasn't really doing non anything non-existent yeah yeah, so you, so we did this, this using the sparkling beverage kind of positioning was a way to mm -hmm. differentiate your brand from traditional CSDs and sodas, but then mm -hmm. dry started going down the soda path. Tell us about the journey of that and what was driving some of those decisions and what did it, where did it lead you? So I would like to give you guys, um, Retail Voodoo, a lot of credit. You guys came in and had this incredible system that you put into place at Dry and how we would sort of get clear on who we were. And mm -hmm. you really helped us continue to be very clear on what we were. We were a mm -hmm. differentiated product. We were elevating. Um, we were different from a soda. I wanted to create a new category of yeah. soda. And we recognize that the word soda, it just, that was such a heavy lift to try to actually change the way people think about yes. soda. So that's where we came up with the name um, um, Sparkling. And then of course we had the situation where, so that all happened, the packaging was great. We yeah. went down that path. And then just right after that, sparkling yes. water just started taking off. Yes. And it became this very difficult situation where people are like, is it a, is it a soda or is it a sparkling water? Right. And mm -hmm. it's neither, right? Cause dry only has a quarter of the sugar of a regular soda. Right. but it's got some sugar and flavoring in it that's differentiated from yes. a, um, a sparkling water. So we got very, uh, we went through this phase where like um, when sparkling water was going up, our velocity started to drop. Yeah, I can And see that. part of the challenge around that was that, as you guys remember when we went through this process of, 
people were thinking of us as the healthier option. Mm-hmm. And even though that's not what we intended to be, we intend to be an indulgence. Like it's like, right. you know, this experience, not, you know, just a, a healthy soda. But because of that, we lost some of those customers to sparkling water. And mm-hmm. so our velocity started to drop. And as a team, we kind of panicked. I'm going to be honest. And I panicked and I was like, well, what's happening? What's happening? And it was like, well, everyone hates sugar. Everyone hates sugar. And dry does have some sugar, even though it's very little, it does have some sugar. So we're like, okay, like, okay, I don't want to do a sparkling water because everyone and their brother's trying to do a sparkling water and the right. price points were so low, like it's so just almost impossible to make money. So I said, well, then let's do a zero sugar. Let's do a zero sugar soda. And, but I was so ambivalent about that. Cause I was like, now I, because at the end of the day, I didn't start dry to start a soda company. I started it to change the way people think about drinking, but now I've moved myself and our company down this soda path. And we created the zero sugar product. It was very good. It did really well. We had national distribution with Kroger and Target right out of the gate, which is fairly unheard of. And it was based off of, you know, how well our, our product was doing, doing, even though we were still growing it just we weren't growing yeah. at the rate that we were growing yeah um and it w- became this really difficult internal thing for me because i felt like i was moving away from what i had wanted to create and mm-hmm. i was like now i'm just no offense to soda but now i'm just a soda company and that's mm-hmm. not that's not why i started it and i really got frustrated um there was challenges like you know like when our, like one of our head of sales she was amazing but she like she jumped ship because she was like I don't know what the problem is I don't know why we're not like you know and it was just too difficult and so there was this this time of turmoil really I uh-huh. think in, in the company and I got very frustrated and then we had and I, I just there was something about zero sugar that just was just wasn't working for me and we I went to a, a meeting with Kroger um, and it was the renewal meeting for the next year. And the buyer just said, I have some bad news. And, you know, due to some sort of internal politics, we're going to discontinue mm-hmm. the product. And I was like, it was like a stab to the guts because you're like, that is a millions of dollars of revenue. But I was also like, good, I want to be done with this product. And this is mm-hmm. my excuse to be able to get out of it. I need to get back to what my company um, I mean, that's a painful way to do it. I don't yeah. suggest people do it that way, but it was certainly like, it was this weird boy, that flight home was like, I was just back and forth. I'm like, I have to tell the team that we just lost many millions of dollars of revenue and that I have decided I really want to pull the plug on the whole thing mm-hmm. um, and how that's going to go down because I just had an, look, their passes off to get this product out to market and it was beautiful and the product was good yeah. and it was doing well. Um, but you know, I think it is the lesson I learned there. It is, you have to be focused on the vision and the mission of what you are what doing. Um, and so that was, that's my experience with dry zero sugar and my experience being a soda company, which we don't intend to be. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. Uh, when you were thinking back about that, like, you know, all of these, you know, th- th- so th- was the mistake I kind of want to try to like capture this a little Mm -hmm. bit. So you, there was a panic moment. So what, you know, what are some Mm -hmm. of the learnings that around these mistakes and then how are you, cause I'm, I'm thinking that you, you might behave a little bit like me, right? I don't know why. Um, But like, I would take all these things and I would go, I'm going to make sure that never happens again. And I'm going to just make sure that blah, blah, blah. Like, how do you make sure that you, how are you personally making sure that you don't, overcompensate um, and not discard opportunities simply because you don't want to go make that mistake again. Do you understand what I'm asking a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So the way that, um, the way that I looked at this, first off, I had a a really great team at the time. um, And we, we did a, what we called a, what do we call it? A a kind of, well, we did the postmortem on it basically. right? uh And we were like, uh looked. okay, so what, because it was painful for everyone and, mm-hmm. and rightly so. And I may be, I'm really good at when I make a decision, I move on mm-hmm. and I don't like sort of think about the pain or whatever. I'm just kind of ready to move on. And I recognize one of the lessons I learned is a, you have to have time to let people mourn something that they worked really hard at. So that was one lesson I learned, mm-hmm. but really the way that I looked at that was like, okay, what led me to those decisions? What was that? And as a team, how did we come up to that answer? 
And part of that, to be honest, was me just saying, let's get an answer. I want an answer. I want, we got to figure this out. Like what's the, you know, cause it was this panic thing. And I think so much times throughout my history in this natural channel, it is like you feel under this constant time pressure to make these very quick decisions. Yeah. And because, you know, like sets are coming up and, and if you don't do well, if your velocities don't start turning, you're going to get discontinued. There's just mm -hmm. this constant pressure. And to be able to take just a beat and really think through and question assumptions. And I think had we done that and taken a little bit more time, uh, we would have come to a different conclusion. Mm -hmm. But I think that it was like, well, you know, you like you thought you saw what the answer was. And so you just kept going for that instead of looking at a bigger picture and question yeah. just that one answer. Like it was like, well, people don't like sugar, but well, is that, was that really it? No, that wasn't really it. It was a, there was a, there was a lot of layers underneath that. Like, how do you describe what dry is? And yes, yeah, sparkling water came in and now we have to figure out how to differentiate ourselves against that, not just panic. And we sort of like, I feel badly because I feel like we, we sort of gave up hope on what dry was and just went to this new thing, which I think is also just like, you got to be very careful about that. Um, so I'm not sorry I went through that. I think it was an incredible experience for me as a CEO to learn about that process of when you come up to these challenges, how do you question them and, and how do you try to look at a bigger picture and not just think, I know what the answer is, so let's go yeah. solve for that one answer Yeah, because it could be others. So yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tough, I think that's you know, the most important lesson. I think it's tough when you, especially when you're CEO and, um, and you have such a dynamic personality like yours, you are a really um, bold personality and um, you surround yourself with, with bold personalities. And I think it's really easy <laughs> to kind of go, here's the big idea, right? Okay. It, it feels mm -hmm. maybe in the moment, it, it might not feel like immediate response to pa uh, to panic. I'm maybe super oversimplifying mm -hmm. here, but it might be more of a like, mm -hmm. well, this seems like the natural next step, like go, like we're, we're solid and we're bold and we know exactly what we're doing. Was it, do you feel like it was more panic? Like, oh my goodness. Or was it just a little bit like, here's the problem, here's the solution, go, or maybe a combination of both? Is definitely, I think there's a, like I said, I think there's a lot of pressure to have an answer. And I think one of the other just super key lessons that I learned or that's actually this is probably the most important one is that honestly up until that point I always thought as the CEO I had to have the answers like if I don't have the answers why would I ask my team to have the answers mm -hmm. that is so opposite of how this thing is I mean really like what you need to be doing is having a team that can come to you and you can listen to it and instead I was always just like oh I think this is the problem let's fix that mm -hmm. um and, and, that, and that's a huge problem, right? And so now we, I definitely don't do that. I'm like, all right, here's what the challenges are. Let's look at all the, you know, I, I want all of your perspectives on what do we think this Great. challenge is. Let's look at data from over here. Let's look at mm -hmm, this. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when we're founders too, we're like, oh, well, my gut says this and my gut says that. And that's great. You definitely need to listen to your gut, but you mm -hmm. need... 15 years into it, you need guts plus data plus like <laughs> a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So I do think a, I want, a, I want answers quickly. Um, I'm very impatient about getting answers and B is that I just want to move forward. I want to feel like we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, we made some, we made some mistakes along the line with that, with pricing and, and, you know, the margins didn't end up being as good as we thought. And I mean, there was a lot of challenges, but it was because I was trying to push us quickly, quickly, quickly to solve this problem because gotcha. mm -hmm. there was, it was a true panic moment. And I, a lot, you know, I feel like so much of the time with dry, there was this panic moment. And when I decided to stop panicking and to step back, I went and got financing for three years instead of like one year at a time, like different things like that, where you can make these more intelligent, thoughtful, measured, uh, responses to things instead of being this, under this time pressure all the time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, so now you are, you and Dry are kind of going through another transformational change. Um, well, yeah. So as we, so as we came out of Dry Zero Sugar, actually, so if this is all related, it, it came from that, is we brought in, um, I was really struggling after that. And um, I have this friend who I met at a women's leadership conference 10 years ago, and she honestly is the smartest person 
I have ever met. As a matter of fact, when I first met her, this is when I first started dry. And I remember thinking, if I was ever going to let someone run my company, it would be her. Okay. And trust me, I was so tightly wound. There was no one going to run my company but me. <laughs> and um, I remember going, she lives in Minneapolis and I had, had had a Target meeting and I was sitting at her her dining room table and I I just was like, I don't know what to do, Betsy. Like, I, I, like I'm, I'm personally exhausted from all this. This company's not where I thought it would be. Um, my team feels a little, like, I don't feel like I'm leading my team in the right direction. Like, I don't know where this brand is going. Like it was this whole thing, right? And I was just kind of like laying it all on her. And I said, I just said to her, I said, I really need your help. Mm-hmm. And she, and I, up to that point, she, you know, was, she was with General Mills. She was like happy. She was, and finally she said, well, why don't I come in as a consultant? We'll see how it works. And she helped me. She said, Cheryl, we got to get back to why did you start this company? Yeah. What made you happy about this? And I'm like, yeah. my mission was to make people feel included. Mm-hmm. that they had an option. That's what I care about. Like mm-hmm. everyone should have this option to feel included. I hate when people feel excluded. I've hated that since I was a little kid. Like I just, mm-hmm. you know, and she's like, then let's get back to that. And she came in, she's now running out. She's our chief revenue officer. And she helped us get back to that mission, the mission of um, helping people who are, whether they're drinking or not drinking and they're, you know, th- there's this, and interestingly, sort of at the same time, which I just love the way the world works sometimes, maybe not so much in 2020, but in general, <laughs> I like the way the world works. Yeah. Um, how this, there's, there's been a massive cultural shift in the last couple of years away from people are really questioning their relationship with alcohol. The millennials refer to themselves mm-hmm. as the sober generation. You know, alcohol sales are down, beer is down considerably because people are recognizing they're doing meditating and they're doing yoga and they're working out, but then they're coming home and drinking a bottle of wine yeah. and like, wait, how, what, something's not, something's not, something doesn't fit here. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's, um, you're starting to see people question their relationship with alcohol. They're drinking less or they're, they're like, we call that sober curious sort of spectrum. They're like people who are like, I'll do a dry January or a sober October mm-hmm. to people who are in recovery. And there's this, so we're seeing this shift and I'm like, oh my God, here comes this wave. This is what we've been talking about. And so at the same time that we were able to come back to our mission, I look behind me and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this, this shift that's happening. Mm -hmm. And, and it just, so that happened. And then, so last summer, as part of all this, Betsy said, I think it's important for you to get out on the road and go meet with, go meet with people and figure out what dry means to them. So I have an Airstream. And it's a little 16 foot airstream named Kevin oh, and right. Kevin, Kevin and I hit, right. Kevin and I hit the road and I went down to the Gulf of Mexico and then back up like through the Grand Canyon. And, and I had the chance to meet with all these different people. And I had this one incredibly powerful experience in Austin where I went to a Sons bar, which is one of the first sober bars in the country. Mm-hmm. And it's when that idea first came out, dry supported it and we gave them product and, and I had not had a chance to meet the, the founder of it, but he'd been to the offices and was very involved with dry. I just personally hadn't had a chance to meet him. And we had an event that night and I was so taken aback about how much I had meant to him personally and his journey and to the people that were all in the room. Like it was, it was such an epiphany for me. I was like, wow. oh, what we're doing is making a difference. These people mm-hmm. really feel like they're being seen, they're being heard, we're answering this real challenge they have, which is I'm important too, just because I don't want to have alcohol when I celebrate or when I go out to dinner doesn't mean that I don't deserve something special. Mm-hmm. And to have people just talk to me like that was so, it was such just incredible. And I came back to Kevin that night and um, I just, I wrote a, I wrote an email to the team and I just said, what we're doing is so important and it is so crystal clear why yeah. we're here. And this is what we're going to be all about is how do we answer to this consumer if that's products, if it's, Mm -hmm. you know, lifestyle stuff, we, you know, and then this last year, it's been incredible. We ended up investing in sounds bar. Yeah. And we, um, so we're, you know, we're partnered with him now and we put on a 15 city uh, national tour that got cut short in March. I think we were on city number four (laughs) or five even. And then, um, but now we have, um, we do these virtual events, sounds bar where you are, we put together kits for people where you can get these like zero proof cocktail kits. Um, you know, we're, we're, we have all these really incredible things in the works around supporting this concept of having elevated options, you know, and this 
this vision I have in my head of you can go into a bar, you ask the bartender for a cocktail and they say with alcohol or without, like that's my vision. And I want to make sure that everyone has that opportunity. So that's, yeah, it was, it's been a, it was an incredible, that was an incredible moment. And the year since has been incredible and we've done a lot to the brand since. So, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So you guys are, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's common with founder owner brands that the brand and them are so entwined, you know, I know Mm -hmm. that. um, So you're making this personal investment. It's kind of a cultural investment, right? Like you've, you're kind of identifying, there's a few other brands that are like lip or slip, or I can't remember. There's a couple of other brands Mm -hmm. out there that are not doing, not a product that's competitive to yours, but also kind of addressing the same um, Mm -hmm. audience. Um, Mm -hmm when you, so you see these people and you hear these people, what is the industry saying as you're talking about this a little bit more? I, I'm curious, mm-hmm. um, as you're having conversations with retailers now and saying, and you're starting this kind of pushing towards this type of positioning, what are you hearing from retailers and, uh, and other industry professionals? Where he, you're getting a thumbs up from consumers, it sounds like. For sure. And what we've done is we started doing, a. I really, we decided to invest a lot of resources into consumer surveys and data. So we're, so we want to be able to show retailers, because we have a vision of what a grocery set should look like, and that there should be more, you know, non-alcoholic celebration beverages. And one of the things I'm really proud of is our, we're reaching out to all of these different products. So we do not see these products as competitors. I mean, there's a, an incredible group of products coming out and we're trying to work with them. We're like, yeah. hey, we're bringing them into the Sans Bar. We're like, how do you want to partner? Do you want to partner over here? Do you want to, um, and it's about just, you know, I, cause I think it's an incredible part of what can happen in this industry and where I think changes can happen at grocery. And the response has been amazing. Oh, and great. like BevMo, I mean, I have got to hand it to BevMo. BevMo is absolutely behind this non-alcoholic um, set and they brought in, non, you know, the non-alcoholic spirits and seed lips and, and the different kind of brands Excellent. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And they're, they're fully behind it. And um, I love that leadership that BevMo is taking in this and we're seeing it, we're seeing it everywhere. I'm not saying that grocery stores are going to change some of their sets tomorrow because we know how that works, but <laughs> the buyers are absolutely getting yeah. it. And it's like when you, cause you can show them this incredible data and they get it. They, they've seen, they see how the numbers are going. Um, so, and even the industry, even alcohol companies are starting to reach out to dry and like, Hey, what are you doing? Let's talk. Mm. Because I think they're seeing that because we're not anti-alcohol. As a matter of fact, we're doing a wine partnership um, this holiday where it's like buy a bottle of, because, you know, we have our 750 bottle celebration, yeah. bottle, like buy a bottle of wine and buy a bottle of dry. You should take both to your, at any party you go to. Yes. You absolutely have to have a non-alcoholic too. You can't just bring alcohol. Yes. Um, so I think that that's, it's just, it's all coming together in a, in a, in a really beautiful way. And I'm really appreciative. We have, we work with like Kroger and HEB and, um, you know, here in the Northwest, we have met markets and these buyers we work with, are, are, I really appreciate our buyers. They get it. They're thinking ahead. They're thinking about their customers. And that's their number one question all the time. And I love that is like, is this something our customers need and want? And we can show them, yes, it is. And then, I mean, and here's where some of the challenges of are of how you get to them, but like, here's how they host. Here's how they think about yeah. dinner party, you know, like all of this different yes. thing. We've kind of, we've, we've given them the whole gamut of, and how it can actually help the, them not just within our sets, but others. So it's been, it's been a, it's been a really cool journey, really cool journey. Well, what's brilliant about what you're doing is that you are, uh, you're not just bringing anecdotal data, like this is what the target market looks like, but you're actually coming to the retailers and you're saying, this is really how this, this audience or this consumer wants to be spoken to. Um, so you are yeah. providing, you're providing them education. You're not just providing them oh, a product. Yeah. Um, how oh, great, sure. right? Because <laughs> reta- retailers are looking for as much education as possible too. And yeah. I think it's wonderful that you're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's in showing them the way they shop and for when they shop for occasions. Yes. I mean, we kind of take the whole thing and yeah. it's been, I, I, they've been super appreciative and very responsive and, and asking for more. Whole Foods is the same way, yes. Fresh Market. They were sure. all like, oh, wow, this is really cool. 
let's keep talking. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, so I have a tricky question then because right, we're we're, we're talking about dry soda. We're going to talk a little bit. We're talking about alcohol as well. Mm -hmm. One of the things um, you know, I've had people that have needed to be sober for their mm -hmm. for their health in mm -hmm. in my life and and I know the relationship with alcohol is very um, strained is very strained even when they're not drinking when they're around other people that are drinking it makes them mm -hmm. uncomfortable sometimes mm -hmm. depends on where they are in their journey and then there's also mm -hmm. people like my neighbor who has said during this pandemic and everything that's going on I had to take alcohol out of my life because mm -hmm. it was adding it was not taking yeah. away and yeah. we I think as um as a culture um we see alcohol as a way to wind down to get comfortable mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know that dry can necessarily help with this, but maybe you are. Is there, are there things that you are providing to people, these sober curious people and just kind of going, okay, well, here's a non-alcoholic beverage, but your lifestyle might be looking like this. And these are some ways to wind down rather than using a crutch like alcohol in order to get you there. Um, especially when we're in the COVID and your, yeah. you know, your office is in one room and the rest of your house is another room and you're using the wine maybe as a separator between your days. Like, how exactly. are you guys, how are you guys addressing that or are you? We definitely are. So I think that the, so some of the ways, I mean, we don't, for us, it is around, for, for me, yeah. when I experienced not being able to drink, one of the things I missed was the ritual. Right? Yes. The ritual of pouring a drink and using beautiful barware. And so we have created a lot of zero proof cocktail recipes and we have some other fun stuff in the works on that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're providing that to people and we're really trying to get people to think, I mean, yeah, separate your day. So then let's go to, let's create, like you can have your, you can have your bottle of dry during the middle of the day with your lunch or however that is, but then let's like take this and turn this into a zero proof cocktail like mm -hmm. take that opportunity to mix yourself a drink put a beautiful garnish with it put it mm -hmm. in a beautiful barware and you know when I first started dry we only drank it out of champagne flutes and it was like mm -hmm. at four o'clock in the afternoon I put mm -hmm. it and I still do that and it's because it's just like there's these I think ritual brings around that sort of that endorphin feel and that mm -hmm. or even sharing a bottle like we have the 750 bottles by that bring that to your friends open that instead of a bottle of wine because mm -hmm. what we're finding obviously as alcohol is more of a fuel for anxiety. It doesn't actually. Yes. And so, and I think that's one of the reasons people are recognizing, especially in COVID, oh, wait a minute, this isn't actually helping. Like I don't sleep better at night. I don't, you know, some of these other things. And so, and then we have um, a bunch of stuff coming up in sober October, but we're, we're really looking at health and wellness as a whole mm -hmm. and mental health is one of those great things. And I think this is one of the reasons why people also are starting to question the relationship with alcohol is because you've got it. God bless the millennials and Gen Z's. They talk about mental health a lot. Yeah. My generation, Gen X, we did not talk no, about mental no. health. And now it is an absolute topic of conversations and how is your mental health, especially during 2020? I mean, everyone's asking that question. And so I think trying to provide um, as much stuff as we can, and we see ourselves as trying to, as trying to be that conduit. So like um, our Sands Bar Where You Are events are, we have different components. Um, there's always, like we did an art therapist in one of our events, right? Oh. Where it was like art therapy on how do you sort of get yourself more relaxed. And so there are different things that, that we try to provide mm -hmm. to help you with that. And mm -hmm. it, but part of it is like, it's like taking that moment for yourself because you can pour this into a beautiful glass mm -hmm. um, and enjoy that the same way you would wine. And it sort of can delineate that, or you can do the zero proof cocktail. And, um, so that I, you know, cause we think that part's important, right? This isn't, yeah. we're all struggling right now. Yeah. Um, and so how do we kind of, how do we help? And we, we do take responsibility. We think that's important to do. So we're doing a lot around health and wellness, both mental health mm -hmm. and physical health over mm -hmm. the next few months. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, when we had our little prep call a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and you, and we just started talking about this topic. I've actually, since re I've removed alcohol, I'm going to go dry for 90 days. I'm using, oh, your, I'm using yay. your litmus. Yes. Oh, well, good. I, the 90 days I, is amazing. I know. I was, a, uh, I'll be honest, before I had kids, I was a, a very 
big drinker. I mean, not, I mean, I was no lush, but I drank every day and mm -hmm. I would drink um, spirits. That was my yeah. choice. And then after kids, I stopped drinking. So I, I don't drink nearly as much as I used to, maybe one or two mm -hmm. um, glasses a week at the most. But I just thought I'm going to get rid of that. But then I also got rid of caffeine at the same time because oh, I wow. said, caffeine and alcohol are not my friend right now. So are not my friends right now. So I'm, I'm awesome. seeing what, seeing what happens. Um, I'm about two weeks amazing. in. Yeah. It's really, you'll like, it is just, and I'm actually going to be doing it again myself. I'm going to start with sober October, which is what I did last year and go, mm -hmm. I don't drink very much anymore myself either, but I still do occasionally. Sure. Um, but I, I love, I love that 90 days that just completely taking it out, like mm -hmm. no matter what. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah. And it just, I don't know. It changed the way I think about alcohol. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, mean, I just, see but, my... but you don't need it. Like you don't have that. Like for me, it was like, I don't love having to have something in a minute. Yes. I do have to have my coffee in the morning, but I didn't want to have to have a glass of wine yes. in the evening because then I get tired and then I can't do as much stuff. Yes. Or I, like if I drink wine, then I'm probably not going to go stand up paddle boarding at sunset, which I love doing, right? Like yes. I'm not, so it's just, yeah, it's just, I don't know, replacing things and making different choices. Yes. To try it out. And like, you don't ever have, you don't have to give it up forever, but just to try. So. Yes. <laughs> well, and I think I'm doing it for myself, not, I mean, I'm pretty, if I set a goal in place, I'm pretty good about mm -hmm. keeping to it. But really, I'm what I'm wanting to do is um, I kind of telepath to my friends because now a couple of, we've had backyard social hours yeah. and, and backyard social hours is there's usually several bottles of wine on the table yep. mm -hmm. and that's it. And so when I showed up to one and I was like, well, I'm not drinking alcohol, there's an opportunity for me to have a conversation about how I was seeing it. And, and now I'm able to share the story and you could see these people kind of going, yeah, I mean, I'm not doing it to make people feel bad, but just kind of to have in their head, oh yeah, I have to have, why does every time I hang out with my friends, I need to have a couple of glasses of wine, right? So it's just kind of, yeah. it's been kind of fun and curious for me. And I appreciate that, that we talked about that last time. Or even just like when you, when you, if you, so I would also say it's a great time to be bringing the 750 bottles of dry or a nice yeah. four pack, yeah. um, but people trying, like just saying, Hey, maybe have one glass and then try dry yes. or like, it's just, it's just an, it's just a great way to, yes. so it doesn't, you don't feel like, cause the other problem is right. If you're in a social, like I had a dinner, I had two dinner parties outside on my big deck here mm -hmm. the last, this last week. And it's like, if it's like the, I mean, one of the nights went very, very late, but like, you know, you're sitting there and so you keep filling up the wine glass and like, yes, so you're there so long. So you need these, like what we call session extenders. And it's like, yes. you need to be able to have these session other options. Session and extenders. Like, I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, it's, uh, so they think dry fits a, it, it's, it's a good fit there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am well, going to, I'm excited for you. Oh, thank you. Don't let me forget if I, before we end, there is a place up on Lummy Island that makes um, the most amazing non-alcoholic beverages that will explode your brain. And I, oh, I'm gonna wow. send you the link to them. It's um, okay. It's actually oh, a hotel cool. that has a restaurant to, and they source all their ingredients from the island. You might know them. Are you yeah, I've heard about? of them. Yes, it is. And I can't think of the name, but I didn't know they were making beverages too. So that's super cool. Oh yes. I will send that link to you. Don't let me forget. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's talk a little bit oh, more okay. about what we're here. <laughs> okay. So, um, now, so what is your wind down now? What is it that you do? You talked about paddle boarding and being by the water, but mm -hmm. what is it now that you are doing to kind of keep yourself peaceful and focused? So for me, it's around, um, as a matter of fact, I was just with a group of, I, I have a CEO group of friends that we really hold okay. each other accountable. And so they were the ones that I was having dinner with the other night outside. And, and I was like, the thing I'm excited about that I would love them to celebrate with me is that I, and I think, you know, I'm 51 now, and I think age has something to do with it. I think living out here has a little bit to do with it, but creating or also that I only have one teenage kid, I, you know, I have four kids and I only have one teenager left here. And so it's like, Ooh. that feels very, very different. Yes. But all of a sudden I have time and space for me mm -hmm. and I am taking that. So on Monday when it was the, you know, we had the day off, I, or Saturday, I decided I want to learn about Szechuan cooking. 
So I ordered a book on Szechuan cooking. And then Sunday I went to, or Monday I went to Wajamaya, bought all my stuff. And I came home and I cooked Szechuan food all day. And there was really no one else there to eat. I guess I had a friend came over and I gave him some of it, but like I did that for myself. And so for me, I, I'm all about flavors and cooking. And so it, but it was like, I, I've never just taken an entire day. And it was actually a day and a half because I got the book and then I spent half the day sitting on the deck reading it. Wow. And then the next day cooking it, I'm like, who does that? Who takes a day and a half just to do something for themselves? Well, you do. Um, well, I do now, but I didn't <laughs> used to. Yeah. I used to be so tightly wound that mm. on the weekends, if I didn't have like a ton to do, which I usually always did, I would get nauseous. Like how oh, dumb is really? that? Yeah. Because like, if I couldn't just sit on a couch and relax, like I had to be training for a marathon, which I never ended up running, or I would be at 16 different baseball games or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I always had to be doing achieving, achieving. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Achieving like, okay, I'm making the kids smarter. I'm making the kids more athletic. I'm making myself more athletic. I'm whatever. And now it's just around space for myself. Um, and then I've also taken some time to fix up my own personal space um, and and, you know, and not having to spend a ton of money, but just like sourcing things from antique stores and different things. Like, for instance, this cool lamp I got back here, the cork lamp, like just but to start to make my space nice for myself, too. And then I just sit in it. And I just like, for instance, sat in my living room last night and just sat there with a cup of tea <laughs> and did nothing else but just sit there. Wow. And I do that. And I go out and look at the stars now. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Like, I'm just taking time. I think mm -hmm. that's it. And I think. I think COVID has certainly put a pause button on life a little bit and allowed us to do that. And I am fully grasping that. And I love it. Well, the, there's one other thing I do that is my very favorite thing to do is I have a two and a half year old granddaughter. Oh who is my goodness. The greatest thing ever. And I will just sit with her and just whatever she wants to do, we'll just do. We'll cook together. Yes. We'll just hang out. She just, ah, and, but just sitting with her and not, feeling like I have to jump up and do anything else like we want to sit and sort we'll, we'll sit and sort like buttons for an hour and that it's so peaceful and incredible and anyway taking time that's I guess my most important thing was a long way that. I can't <laughs> yes. believe that mm. her name is Gia Sherelle so she's got my name too oh <laughs> how wonderful that's so she's, great yeah. she's oh congratulations so, on that thank I thank you I um, I, I sort of have grandkids, and in a previous life, I was I was in a relationship with somebody for years who had kids that were um, older. Oh, okay. They're they're in their thirties now. Oh, okay, and, okay. And um, oh. so they're kind they're not my stepkids anymore, but I kind of have a little. Yeah, but once you yeah you've been with them yeah. Yeah, and I'm awesome. four from those guys. Oh wow! You know, oh, that's but I great. don't get to, yeah I don't get to really see them other than you know visually I mean like on social media oh, and yeah. stuff. But, but it's very yeah. there's a there's a place there, man. It's so different from your kids. Yeah. So yeah. yeah yeah and it's just it's just so peaceful and lovely and mm. yeah she's she's a lot of fun. That's so, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, we've talked a lot about the business. Is there anything that you are like, oh, I really want to make sure that people, that I get to share this particular point um, about kind of this journey around um, where dry is going and not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be about dry, but just kind of things that you're finding about this new audience that you think that people would like to hear. Um, you know, I think it's around, uh, if we, I, th I think as a, as a country, I think inclusion is really important and that concept of community and connection. And that's what we care about, the celebration, this connection and including everyone. And I think we all know that this country has become incredibly divisive. And I think all of those different ways that we can come together and unite and make everyone feel included mm -hmm. and everyone have a place at the party. Is, is the way I think of this. And that's kind of the way that I want to live my life holistically, right? Is, is yes. through that. And I, I think that just, I think when we as CEOs live our values fully through our company, everything starts to come together and align. And yes, I kind of can't get over how powerful that is and how, as I've done that, how things have come together and the people that I have got to meet I did you know as I said I went into this tour and I just I met with different sober influencers and sober groups and 
you know, just all these different kinds of people. And they all, they, they've all come to this point in their life around alcohol for very different reasons. And it's mm-hmm. not because they all necessarily, you know, have the disease of alcoholism. It's just these really different stories. And it's so powerful. And they, I feel like they're in this incredibly generous group of people who are willing to share what they've learned and mm-hmm. to be open about their, to, to be open about however they are on that spectrum. Mm-hmm. And just being around them has made me feel good. And they're so generous with wanting to share and their excitement around things. And I mean, they're the reasons that, that like I gave up alcohol for 90 days. I met one of them and she's like, Sherelle, you should read this book. You should really think about this. And then it, I did it with Annie Grace's book, The Naked Mind. And I was like, oh, well, that is really fascinating. Like, and I just appreciate this generosity of sharing information and, and being supportive of each other mm-hmm. because it is still difficult, right? When you find, when you tell friends, I'm not drinking, everyone's like, Ooh, why, you know, rehab lately? Like, yeah. like, like it, there's, it always is this negative thing. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like we need to get to a yeah. place where no one says to you, well, why don't you smoke? You know, like, yeah. why don't you smoke? Like, well, <laughs> exactly. You Come know, on like, now. This is, mm-hmm we all get to make our choices on what we put on our bodies and it shouldn't mm-hmm. be a, a thing. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyway, I just, I, that's what I appreciate about this. And I think again, dry is not anti-alcohol by any stretch. As a matter of fact, a lot of people use dry as a mixer. It's mm-hmm. around inclusion and making mm-hmm. sure that everyone, we, our mission is social drinking for everyone. That's our mission. Mm-hmm. That's what we say all the time, mm-hmm. social drinking for everyone and everyone should have an option, whatever mm-hmm. they choose to drink. So if you want to put alcohol in dry, put alcohol in dry. If you want to create a really cool zero proof cocktail, then do that. But like mm-hmm. everyone gets to, everyone gets to choose. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's, what I, awesome. that's what makes me happy. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you for answering all these questions. I, I just have a couple of, of more that are start to kind of get away from the topic a little bit. Okay. But, uh, well, it's kind of topic-y, but this is kind of um, my last favorite questions are these. Okay. Um, uh, this is what I call my cocktail hour treat. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is like, um, what is, you know, is there some sort of um, interesting fact about whether it's dry or being soda or alcohol that you've run across or beverages in general that is kind of interesting that, um, you know, you, that, you know, I could take to my next um, virtual happy hour and say, Hey, did you hear? Did you know? Uh, do you have some kind of fun, interesting tidbit? I, well, I think it's interesting. So um, one of the things that Dry is doing is we are actually writing a, a, a book on zero proof cocktails. Um, and what I have learned through that process is how we taste and perceive flavors. So we really only taste five different things, sour, bitter, sweet, salty, and then umami is considered continually kind of maybe mm-hmm. the fifth, but we perceive flavors. We can perceive any flavor. So, but so like, you know, when you, if you catch a cold or you catch COVID and you can't yeah. smell, then smell. you can't taste as much. Uh-huh. Um, and so, but the, it's the perception comes not just from the aroma, but also the visual and the color. Like mm. there's all these things that come together for that perception of flavor. And that, that really blew my mind. And then there's just some other pieces too around how you marry flavors or how you complement flavors or how you contrast flavors so Mm. that you'll have to read the book for that I can't give away all my stuff but um because I think for me I am so fascinated with how flavors work and that's why I wanted to create dry because I loved pairing wine and food I thought I'm not a complete wine aficionado but I loved how if I put wine and food together how you could get these incredible pair like it would make them both better yeah. Um, and that's what I wanted with dry and, um, and that we've done that. And it was really one of the really cool things I did early on was, um, well, not Lauren Adler, her name's Lauren Adler. And she had this Lauren. incredible chocolate shop up on, um, on Queen Anne. I don't know if she yes. still has it. Yes. Yes. Chocolate I know she, yes. 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 She is, she is one of the smartest people I ever met around chocolate and she sourced all these different chocolates. And she said, I think we should try a dry and chocolate pairing. And we did this incredible experience where at times, you would be able to taste the flavor of the beverage better or other times you taste the flavor of the chocolate. And I just, mm-hmm. I, I find that all super fascinating how that can work. So. Oh, that's cool. It's almost yeah. like, mm, it's almost like blending colors. Like if you have yellow yeah. and blue and then you, they're yellow and blue, when you put them together, it's green. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's more blue and sometimes it's more yellow, but it's still different. Um, yes. 
it's not however the same. if you put yellow and green slime together it turns gray i learned that yesterday <laughs> when i was playing with gia I was, well, I, told, I kept telling her, it's going to turn green, Gia. And I'm like, oh, it turned this growth gray. <laughs> I suppose that can Never happen mind. with food, too. I'm sure that can happen <laughs> with flavors, too. Uh, and, what, and then tell me now, uh, the, my very last question is, so what is your, maybe either what's your favorite, I'm going to call it your mocktail, or mm -hmm. what's your go-to mocktail? They could be the same, they could be different. So I really like spicy Mm. Uh, so I was talking about Szechuan food. So we have one where we use a uh, mango habanero syrup and you can make it yourself or there's a great company called Portland Syrups Company that we use um, with the pineapple dry. And then um, I like to grill pineapple and then put that pineapple in the drink and then mm. do a chili, chili sugar rim. That's my favorite. Ooh. And are you, you're growing pineapple here? No, no, no. Grill, grill oh, the grill. pineapple. Not grill. <laughs> Why, I'm yes, like, I have quite the I'm, garden out here. <laughs> I'm going to your house. What are you doing this afternoon? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, okay. No, All right. I grill it. Yeah. I love so, it. It's not going to be easy. in your book? Yep. Yep. That's okay. one of them. We have, some, we have some amazing ones, but it's really cool because they're all done by like, you know, the sour, spicy, salty. Ooh. Yeah, bitter. Yes. I, yes. There's some bitter ones that I really like. So a really easy one is a vanilla bean soda with grapefruit juice and a little grapefruit um, uh, garnish. And it, that's oh. incredible. It's so refreshing and it kind of has just a touch of bitter and of the sweet from the vanilla. It's, mm -hmm. it's really good and really easy. And you can, yeah, you can kind of put it in any kind of glass you want. And, yeah. And always something you know. beautiful in your hand. Something exactly. Something pretty yeah. Especially pretty. if you do the pink grapefruit juice and then it's like this beautiful color and yeah, it's a good one. Oh my goodness. There's many. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, th that, that's, that's our time for today, Sherelle. I, I have really enjoyed um, talking with you again today, particularly around this topic. I think, um, yeah, I think the beverage industry is ready for another big change, you know, mm -hmm. you know, first it was sugar and now I think alcohol is really, you're on the yeah. front, you're on the front of something else. Yeah, been thinking yeah. talking about it for 15 years. Let's hope <laughs> we can so, finally so, get there with yeah. this. It's the normal. It's the I'm normal only overnight success. Ahead of time. Oh, I know. It's always the normal overnight success. Exactly. It sounds like it looks like it came out of nowhere. You've been working on it forever. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, well, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for being with me today. Um, I hope you had fun, and I look forward to I connecting had a great again. Mm. Okay. Thanks a lot, Diana. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. This episode is sponsored by Retail Voodoo, a creative marketing firm specializing in growing, fixing, and reinventing brands in the food, beverage, wellness, and fitness industries. If your naturals brand is in need of positioning, package design, or marketing activation, we're here to help. You can find more information at retail-voodoo.com. And so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel and share with your network. Until next time, be well and do gooder.